His smile was contagious. Eddie Callisto Tavares lost her father during a COVID-19 outbreak at the Maples Long-Term Care Home in Winnipeg. Before her dad died, she was granted special access to care for him. She witnessed what other families did not see. One night, the outbreak got so severe, paramedics were called in to help the sick residents. They were crying out that they were thirsty. And I would just be compelled sometimes to just walk down the hall and do nothing but say, help is coming, help is coming, knowing that there was very little help coming. More than 17,000 residents have died in Canada's long-term care homes because of COVID-19. Their deaths prompted new national standards aimed at improving care. If these standards were in place before, I believe we would not be leading the world in having the worst performance in long-term care. They cover everything from infection control, emergency planning and staffing, but also how to prevent falls and limit the use of restraints and antipsychotic medications. But all of these are voluntary. I'm worried that uh, these standards will just sit on the shelf. It's up to the provinces and territories who are responsible for long-term care to act on them. We'll take a look at them. I have, uh, in the process of reviewing them, I have no interest in watering down what Ontario is already doing. Ontario maintains it has a high-quality system after the military was called in to deal with outbreaks there. Those who work inside the homes say Ottawa should make the new standards law. We strongly feel that they're going to be meaningless if they're just simply left up to the goodwill of service providers. The federal government won't say if it will require provinces to make these standards mandatory in order to get more funding. We are looking forward to sign agreements with provinces and territories to see how they can use those dollars to further meet these new standards. Ottawa has set aside $3 billion to help provinces and territories bring in these new standards for long-term care homes. But the parliamentary budget officer estimates much more is needed, nearly $14 billion per year, and that's on top of what is already being spent. Marina von Stackelberg, CBC News, Ottawa. Dr. Samir Sinha joins us now. So, Dr. Sinha, you said you're worried these standards will just sit on the shelf. How do we make sure that doesn't happen? We can make sure it doesn't happen by, by taking steps to mandate these at the provincial and territorial level to be the basis of things like accreditation. Quebec actually does that. They're the only province that legislatively mandates the implementation of these standards for accreditation. All provinces can do this, but they can also make sure that they become the basis of inspections and enforcement and other accountability measures. We can do this. But what does, what does holding long-term care to account sound like? Because accreditation, that sounds like a good thing, but we already know that there are some problematic homes that have managed to get their accreditation. So, so how much further do you go? So you go further by making sure that if people have complaints and that triggers an inspection, for example, or when we do annual um, unannounced inspections, you know, what are the standards we're inspecting against? And right now, those standards are not these national standards. And certainly there are other accreditation organizations out there that have their own U.S.-based standards. But I'm saying we actually have a national standard that's made in Canada. Let's accredit all homes, let's inspect, and let's enforce all homes against these standards starting now. But what's the stick if, if they don't comply? Well, then you lose your license. It's as simple as that. You should not be providing care unless you can actually meet these standards. It's as simple as that. Okay, Dr. Sinha, thank you. Thank you.